we're going to make paint. It's one of my favorite things to do. So I've been very lucky to be given some rocks from Central Australia. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna crush these up in the mortar and pestle. But a little tip, and this, uh, this just normal um, latex glove will work fine with this mortar and pestle. If you've got a bigger vessel, then maybe a stocking will work. The reason I'm putting this over the top is so no dust or dirt ends up in my face, basically. I could keep doing this until I get rid of all the solid bits to speed the process up a little bit. And I would still suggest you do this is use a sieve. Obviously I'm using a tea strainer here. But this is nice and fine and it feels, it feels nice and fine. I might go a little bit more than that. We're down to mixing the pigment. So what I'm going to do, and if ever you've made pasta, put a hole in the middle. We're using drying retarder as the vehicle to mix and grind our pigment. So what we'll do, we'll just start mixing it up. How much you use, that really depends on the actual pigment itself. I've used about one part drying retarder volumetrically, as you can see, to two parts pigment. And that's probably a little bit thin, so I can now add a little bit more pigment to that. Because I, what I want is a thick paste. I don't want it too thin or it's just going to spread everywhere. So now we're starting to get a paste. And you see just with that little bit more dry pigment that I added in, it's now gone quite thick into a paste form. And this is where the paint muller comes in. Now before you could hear the grinding of the pigment and now with the paste and I've only just I haven't even started really grinding it with the muller but just that little bit I did there was enough to reduce the size of the grains down. Now I'm going to add some dispersant and we really only need to add two or three percent so I'm doing this by eye and that's the surface tension breaker. Now, I don't know if you can hear it now, but it's a lot quieter. I'm pushing down quite hard, but you can hear it's actually getting quieter and quieter. And that's as the grit of the pigment is being ground down. Okay, so what we have now here is the pigment slurry. And so that's the letdown pigment in its most pure form. So with what we've started with, which was probably volumetrically about an ounce of pigment or maybe less, so probably, probably 20 grams of pigment. To the pigment slurry, you will add about the same amount of binder. So um, in this instance we would use gel medium uh, for a nice thick paint, polymer gloss varnish or polymer matte varnish for something a little bit thinner. Um, you could use gum arabic as the binder if you wanted to make a watercolour. So I'm going to use gel medium to mix with my pigment slurry. Each colour will be different you could normally start with about equal parts of the gel medium to the pigment slurry. You need to make sure there's enough binder 
uh, in this case the gel medium, to hold the pigment on. But you don't want too much that you end up with all binder and a, and a really sort of um, insipid lack of, lack of color. Okay. And the one last ingredient that we need to add into this is defoamer or anti-foam. And we just need a few drops. Because as, as I mix the acrylic and the pigment together, it will start to form air bubbles. Now when we do this in production, we actually use a high speed dispersion unit and that definitely helps to put air into the mix. Now interestingly, and each pigment is different, interestingly this has actually turned out slightly thinner than the two parts. You'll recall the slurry was really quite thick and of course the gel medium is very thick but when the two are mixed together Chemically, they have actually thinned a little bit. So you could use a rheology modifier to thicken that up if you wanted to. But I'm going to leave it just like that. And now I'm going to put it into a tube. So the refillable tubes are terrific for storing your paint. And there you have it, your own tube of paint.